Raggy dolls were enjoying a peaceful day in the country. Back to front was lying flat on his stomach, looking up at the clear blue sky. Hi-Fi was listening to his music, while Lucy and Princess were looking at all the wild flowers growing in the fields. Oh, isn't this fun, said Princess. There are so many different shapes and colours. Oh, yes, replied Lucy. And look at all those daisies. Let's make a daisy chain. Oh, yes, thought Princess. We can make necklaces and bracelets and crowns. Dotty was trying to do a painting of Sad Sack. Sit still, she called. How can I paint you if you keep on fidgeting? It's not my fault, said Sad Sack glumly. I think... I'm sitting on a thistle or something. Well, get rid of it, said Dotty. Sad Sack fussed about and finally brought out a small sharp stone from underneath him. Ah, oh, that's a bit better. Good, said Dotty. Now can you please sit still? It was such a lovely day. They were all feeling really happy, except for Claude. He didn't think it was right for a smart French doll like him to be lounging around doing nothing in particular. Zut alors, he said loudly. I'm really bored. Relax, Claude, said back to front. There's nothing better than a nice day in the country with lots of lovely fresh air and warm sunshine and peace and quiet. But Back to Front had spoken too soon. What was that noise? Sad Sack looked around in alarm. Oh, do keep still, pleaded Dotty. Listen, he said. The dolls all listened, even Hi-Fi who took off his earphones. Whatever can it be? thought Princess. Lucy was all of a tremble and in danger of coming to pieces. The strange noises got louder and louder. It sounds like a zoo, crackled Hi-Fi, listening hard. No, said Dotty. It's a circus. Look. And sure enough, it was. And coming straight towards them was a huge elephant. <coughs> Quel horreur, yelled Claude. <coughs> what is that? Shh, said Back to Front. He'll hear you. The elephant lumbered towards them. He was so big and heavy, the ground shook with every step bouncing the dolls up and down. Oh no, it's an earthquake, moaned Sansac, and the dolls ran to escape. But everywhere they ran, they were surrounded by heavy lorries, animals in cages, and a gang of men who were marching towards them. Quick, cried Dotty, pointing to a sheet of folded canvas. Let's hide under here. The dolls dived under the canvas and huddled together. Oh la la, it is dark in here, 
said Claude. I wonder what's happening, whispered Lucy. Outside, men were pulling on heavy ropes. They pulled and they pulled. And suddenly, the raggy dolls felt themselves leaving the ground. Slowly, the canvas was being pulled up a tall pole. At last, the tent was up. Now, the raggy dolls were right at the very top. Far below them, the circus ring was a hive of activity. Two of the seals were practicing with a ball, balancing it on their noses and tossing it between each other. The circus horse was pawing the ground impatiently. The clowns were busy too, making pies to throw at one another. And two huge lions were roaring inside their cage, waiting for their trainer. At the top of the pole, the dolls were feeling nervous. What shall we do? However will we get down, they wondered. Don't worry, girls, said back to front. I'll carry you across the wire. There's a ladder on the other side. We can get down from there, no problem. Lucy, Dotty and Princess hung on terrified as back to front set off across the wire, walking backwards to see where he was going. Hi-Fi and Sadsack decided they couldn't wait, so they grabbed the trapeze and swung across together. Look out! yelled Claude. But he was too late. Hi-Fi and Sadsack collided with the others. Claude could hardly bear to watch as the dolls fell towards the ground. Sadsack landed on a seal. Uh, uh, what a floppy ball, uh, thought the seal. Back to front, landed on the circus horse, giving it such a terrible fright, it galloped off with back to front hanging on for all he was worth. Hi-Fi landed on the big bass drum. Splosh! Poor Lucy. She landed in a custard pie. It was horribly sticky. But Princess and Dotty were in real trouble. They came down in the lion's cage. The lions had sharp teeth and hungry eyes. Oh dear, thought Princess. I think they're going to heat us up. But Dotty knew what to do. She picked up the trainer's whip and gave it a crack. Get back, you brutes! Oh, Dotty, you're so brave, cried Princess. Oh, I'm just lucky the lions were well trained, said Dotty, breathing a sigh of relief. Claude was still at the top of the tent pole. The dolls looked up at him helplessly. I'm OK. Don't worry about me, he called down. But he was well and truly stuck. Back to front had an idea. He'd spotted a trampoline. Together, the raggy dolls pushed it next to the tent pole, right under Claude. Jump, called back to front. Claude looked down at the trampoline. Oh well, vive la France, here goes, he thought. And he leapt off the platform. Up and down he bounced. It was a soft, comfortable landing. Claude was down without a hair out of place. Now all the raggy dolls were safe on the ground. The animals really enjoyed their circus act. It made a change for them to see others doing all the work. The seals gave the raggy dolls a big round of applause. Unk, unk, well done, uncle, unk, unk. The raggy dolls bowed and waved goodbye. Outside, they were surprised to see a long line of people. Say, so must be crazy to go in there, said Claude. Yes, said Sadzak, especially as they've missed the best act of the whole evening. The Raggy Dolls Tent Pole Act. <laughs> oh, I made a joke. It's not
not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind, like the raggy dogs, raggy dogs, raggy dogs, raggy dogs. dogs like you and me. Raggy dogs, raggy dogs, raggy dogs, raggy dogs, raggy dogs. made him perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and jump. 